What's going on, everyone? First and foremost, I am back. Everybody that has reached out, making sure that I've been okay and just wanting to know where the Mythbusters episodes are. Well, as I said before, I'm not getting paid for this, so I do have to work a normal job, and this is kind of like extra on my spare time. I will add, for any new followers, subscribers, thank you. Anyone that showed up at Tuner Galleria and thanked me in person for doing this and the emails I have been getting and the messages thanking me for doing stuff like this, um, blown away by it. It's a little bit surreal. Uh, you know, um, it's just something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cooking on the top, off the top of my head and people have questions and comments and I'm trying to provide my knowledge and education that is in my head to you guys to help you. So let's get to the first topic. First topic I got. A base map is fine as long as you don't throw a check engine light. That one is false. So let's first start with what a base map is. If you bought a device like this, let's say a Flash Pro K tuner, most devices come with some type of files loaded onto it that you can flash onto your vehicle, which is called a base map. In reality, if they can probably go back in a sense, if someone created a, you know, the term base map, it should really be changed to a starting point. A base map is meant to just be that. It's a base or a starting point for you to actually then customize a tune. If you don't know or you're not familiar with tuning, that's fine. You hire somebody like myself to dyno tune your car and customize that tune to your setup. Specifically, a base map is just meant for you, to, you the user, to start the vehicle and make sure you got no fluid leaking, to make sure you got no weird noises, to make sure everything is good to go. So just because your car runs somewhat decently or you feel like it might be a little bit quicker, the butt dyno is very inaccurate. The whole thing about a dyno tune is it's being customized to your setup. And not one single vehicle even if it's the same setup, the same year, the same whatever, the same day, same temperature, they're not going to be the same, no matter what. They'll be close, but in order to take advantage of that little device that you just bought, and you're trying to make more power, you're trying to make the car feel quicker, and then you're leaving it at the table, you can actually lose power. You can lose power if settings aren't set correctly, and you'll never know it on the street unless you put it on the dyno and see a before and after comparison, which we've done before. We have some videos on our channel. You have to go back, and you can see the comparisons that we've done, a base map versus a full-out custom tune that I've done. A base map is just that. It's a starting point. It's a foundation. So just because your car runs and it has no check engine lights, don't think you're good to go. Don't think you're fine. You can cause some issues down the road too. So if you've been driving on it for four or five months, that's fine. Maybe you're on some borrowed time. Maybe you're actually making less power than you made with the stock calibration file. So just because your car runs fine on a base map doesn't mean you're leaving things off on the table. And it doesn't mean that you should be driving on it long term. Myth number two. I actually heard this one not too long ago. A dyno tune will actually cause harm to your engine. That one is false. It's not gonna happen unless the person that is actually tuning your vehicle doesn't know what they're doing. So if you put somebody that's just, you know, from the street or you found them on the internet and hey man, they were $300 cheaper than this guy that's been doing it for this long and you know, he has a shop and he's doing all of this, then yes, if you put somebody that doesn't have the experience behind your wheel, a dyno tune then in a sense could possibly cause damage, but it's not necessarily the tune itself, it's the person that's doing it. When the car's on the dyno, I can only speak on myself, I am so focused on everything. I'm focused on what the sensors are doing, I'm focused on where the air fuel's at, I'm focused on this noise, I'm focused on that noise. And that's the main reason too, we won't do street tunes. When you're street tuning a vehicle, 
the person driving, or if you have somebody driving for you, you still have to focus on stuff around you in a sense. A dyno is a lot safer because it's in an enclosed, controlled environment, and you don't have to worry about what's around you. Plus, the dyno will give us feedback. So a dyno tune takes about three to four hours, depending on the setup. If it's a larger setup, it can take even longer because it's not that quick and simple. But at the same time, if you have a well-experienced dyno tuner that is looking out for your best interest, your vehicle is going to be more safe on the dyno as opposed to on the street. Myth number three. And this one I hear a lot too. My setup is not super expensive and I'm not looking for high horsepower so I can go with cheaper parts. That one is false. Let me explain. So every now and then we get somebody that comes in or calls or messages us and they're looking for advice on a certain part or ultimately they're shooting us the info on their setup and before they get the dyno tune and then we will respond back and say hey your setup looks decent but this part could be a problem you might want to upgrade it before the dyno and then their answer is i'm not looking for that much power so it should be fine it doesn't matter how much power you're trying to make it doesn't matter how much money you spent on the setup or the car or whatever the main goal when a car goes on the dyno, is to be 100% problem-free when I'm dyno tuning it. Simple, right? So we're going to use a couple examples. And this will be on the turbo side of things. I have heard before, I don't need a very expensive blow-off valve because I'm not making a lot of power or I'm not trying to make a lot of boost. Well, here's the problem. And here's one example. What happens if that knockoff blow-off valve starts to leak during the tune. Well, you're not going to be making the same boost that you were making on the prior run. Also could have other issues where the blow-off valve sooner or later might not want to open up at all. And well, go Google compressor search and see what will happen in the long run. That's just a blow-off valve though. We could talk about other things. I've seen knockoff fuel pumps. Now fuel pumps alone aren't usually that much money for a basic setup. Usually they're about 150 bucks. You can go on Amazon now and buy whatever brand, I, I don't even know, for about $30. What do you expect you're gonna get there? So you put a fuel pump on the vehicle, $30 fuel pump from Amazon, and we start dyno tuning it, and we get you know about an hour in, air fuels are looking good, then all of a sudden out of nowhere, boom, air fuels tank. Running super rich or super lean, no rhyme or reason. Well, what's going on now? Are we having an injector failure? Are we having a pump failure? Well, we don't know. You got that $30 fuel pump in there. I don't feel too comfortable, safe, confident, whatever the word is, on that $30 pump. If your fuel pump starts to make a crazy noise on the dyno and I start getting erratic readings, I'm going to stop and I'm going to call it for the safety of your engine. Now, What's going to happen, though, if that inexperienced tuner just kind of brushes off that noise and says, hey, let's keep going? Well, if you get, if you go lean up top during a pull, you could wipe out your whole engine. Or let's just say you bought a cheap fuel pump for the heck of it, and it wants to destroy itself, and all the debris is going to go into your injectors. Maybe you spent a good amount of money on your injectors, and maybe you don't have a fuel filter. It all adds up. In order to have a well put together setup that you're not going to have issues with, you have to spend a little money. Just because your buddy bought this off eBay, just because your buddy bought this off at Am on Amazon, and he's been running his car fine for however long, it doesn't mean you're going to be as lucky. It does not matter the power you're trying to make, it doesn't matter how much you paid for your setup or the vehicle itself. You now have it and you should have that starting point where you want things to be reliable, you want things to be consistent, 
You don't want to, hey, every time the car's about, every time the weather's 30 degrees out, car doesn't want to start. Fuel pump's making a weird noise, but it's only when it's cold out. Kind of just toss your hands up in the air in that sense. So plan your setup out. Talk to experienced tuners. Talk to people that have experience in this field that do this day in and day out of their life and look that person up. I encourage everybody to go look at our Google reviews. I'll even do one better and I'll provide the link down below. We've been doing it for 24 years now. I've been here constantly grinding and working for 24 years. And when I'm not here and I'm not doing personal stuff out of work, I am always educating myself, always looking at new stuff, always expanding my brain. Some people do not care about that. Some people are just out to make a quick buck and you gotta watch it. As much as you're doing your homework on a setup, also do a little bit of homework on that shop. Go to the shop, talk to the owner, talk to the people that work there, see how the environment is. And to wrap this video up, as I said in my intro, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all the comments guys coming up to me at the meets and, and shaking my hand and just thanking me. I appreciate it. And I don't want to sound like I'm not grateful. I am. It just really doesn't sink in my head because what I'm doing here is helping you guys. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's the very least I can do. I've been supported by a ton of people over my many of years of doing this. And this is a way of me thanking everybody and giving back in a sense. With that being said, I do need some more ideas for myths. Let's hear them. Comment down below. I'm going to try to keep this on a regular basis. Right now, it's actually lunchtime and everybody's quiet next door. So I'm fitting one in between. As soon as I'm done with this, back to work. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you didn't miss me too much. Take care, everybody.